This week on Building the Future, we'll be finding out about the rigging packages for the Volvo Ocean 65. We visit the factory where the ropes are made, and Rick will be spending the day at Green Marine in the UK, and even helping them out, sort of. The first boats are well underway, and we'll meet Volvo veteran Nick Bice, who'll be running a unique project for the next edition of the race. Nothing happens on a boat without line. From steering, to sail handling, to keeping the crew safe. So it's absolutely vital to have rope of the highest quality. There are over 400 different strops, control lines, sheets, halyards and lashings on a Volvo Ocean 65. They're manufactured in a specific and tightly controlled way so that each line meets the requirements of the boats and the sailors. All rope starts out as fine polymer fibres, much thinner than a human hair, but for its weight, stronger than steel. Here we're at the Gottifredi and Maffioli factory in Italy, where we can see the fibres being combined to make Dyneema core. It's all about ensuring strength and consistency. The precise weave pattern that's controlled by this machine gives each different type of line its very specific qualities. The technology has changed, but the basic technique for making rope has been the same pretty much forever. And this machine, which is making mooring lines, even runs on a gearbox from a Second World War tank. The core provides the strength, but the cover gives the line its handling properties. And on this machine, we see the cover fibers being wound around the core and pulled at a precise tension through this die. The rope is then wound onto spools and prepared for shipment. Is that for me? That's for you. A cup of tea. You knew I was coming, didn't you? I did. I had a faint idea, yeah. We know that the manufacturer goes to great lengths to ensure consistency. So I asked Scotty to tell me how his team managed to maintain this through to the finished rigging pieces. Um, I think in total we're about 450 different textile items on one of these boats. 450 Different rigging items. items. So loops, lashings, bits of bungee, halyards, sheets. And wow. then with the with one design, obviously, these have all got to be kind of designed in logs so we make them the same. Yeah. Basically, if ever there was a problem, we can, we can tell which reel it came from. So we know the batch of material used, the machine it was made on, when it was made. Yeah. So this is it. This is not 450 though, is it? No, this isn't quite everything yet. This is a, a sample. Oh man, these are beautiful. This is beautiful. Love those colours. So there's four of these on board. They're 65 metres long. Right. We've got an eye on each end, so they can be used, you know, either end. Yeah. Um, we, we tip the end with a Dyneema cover where it passes over a, a sheave and friction. Yeah. Also makes it a bit lighter. How, how many how many spin sheets are they getting through in around the world? Just just out of interest, because I know I know when I did the race in '97, we just used to burn through. I mean, yeah. they were like a, we actually we would take rolls of you know on of board. Re reels oh, wow. on board just just, just run out a yeah, new one. That's yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Um, there to get around the world, you're probably looking at about five sets. Five sets. Five of sheets. sets. Five, so, so that's ten sheets total. Um, you no, know, it's four sheets on board, so times five. So you're going to be 20, 20 of these, basically, right. to get around the world. So you did a bit of rope work back in the 70s we, or whenever We all did everything. Uh, okay. Yeah, we had to. You know, you're a little, everybody's a little bit of a jack of all trades, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah and I, I used to I ran a few boats, yeah. throw the odd ice splice in here and there. Can okay. you remember how to do a Bremel lock, do you think? A Bremel? Yeah. It's all right, so I'm going to, there, got, got my fid, dumped the, dumped the line into the fid like that. Too bad. How's that? You can come and help make the spares. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Maybe a, a bit of work on the detailing and the finesse. It's probably about four out of ten, I'd say. Four? four. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're kind of perfectionists here. Um, probably best to stick to the day job. I've definitely learned more in the last week about ropes than I've learned in 20 years of sailing. I'm going to head inside now and check out the holes. This place is big. How do they keep two 65-foot carbon fibre monsters hidden? 
while Rick's poking around at Green Marine, why don't we head back to Italy and find out a bit more about some of the boat's internal systems. The complex hydraulic systems for the Volvo Ocean 65 Canting Keel are being built at the Caraboni factory. Massive forces are required to swing the 5 metric ton keel from side to side and to withstand the almost unimaginable sailing loads that will be generated. We'll be talking about these mechanical systems in more detail in future episodes. In this time lapse we can see the complete system being laid out. It's amazing to think that all these components will be squeezed into the boat. The power and reliability of these systems comes from solid design, choice of materials and accurate construction. It's a big responsibility and that's where the Volvo Ocean Race's Nick Bice comes in. Let's head back to Green Green to hear more. During the time, and back in your day you would have loved it, what's going to end up in here? Why does everyone keep saying, back in your day, Rick? I asked Nick to update me on his role as the share services manager for the next race. I mean, in, in essence, not a lot has changed from races previously. What I'm doing is uh, going to manage the tech support or technical support for some of the major components on board. So the winches, the masts, the sails, the canting keel. Um, a few of the boat builders. Looks like you've got a bit on. Well, yeah, you could say that, but um, embracing the challenge and uh, looking forward to seeing one of these things out in the water. Well, Nick's got an amazing project and a really busy couple of years up ahead of him by the looks of it. It's great to see so many familiar faces in and around the race. And I'm just heading up to meet another one, Jo Elliott. She's in charge of all the bits and pieces, components, accessories, everything that goes inside a Volvo Ocean 65. So what's all, what's all this stuff, like? what's that? So that's some of our metal work. So we've got some stanchions, some stacking posts, footrests, and various other bits and pieces. So these are, these are stacking posts? They are indeed, yes. Cool. Nice rudder bearing. Yeah. Uh, who, who makes them? That's JP3 in France. JP3. That's a really nice piece of kit, isn't it? So really, manufacturers just from all, all over, over the place, yeah. yeah? Whoever's the best for their job, so yeah. all over the world. This is the media desk. This is the media desk, yes. Yeah. Um, so the OBR's laptop will go in there. Battery chargers in there. The cables will come up there. It's cool. So this is the galley. And th this is fixed or gimbaled? Uh, fixed. Fixed, so that, that's why it's angled like that. Yeah. Burners in there. Yeah. Um, Stoke, uh, yeah. The sink in there, and then we have cooler boxes right. that fit in these recesses here. There's one other thing that people are always interested in. This is the galley, what's the other one? The toilet. Yeah, where's the toilet? I think the toilet's just being painted as we speak. Real career highlight, this one. Toilets. Well, found my way to the paint shop. Gonna look for Ian, see a few of the other components. Pretty obvious what that is. Finished steering wheel. They won't paint this with, with, with white paint. These will get what we call clear coated. This one's about halfway through. And down there, the elusive toilet. Or as we call them on boats, heads. Things got quite the journey ahead of it. Things are hotting up here at Green Marine. And in the next episode, we'll be in France, checking up on the sails that we saw being made a few weeks ago. We'll be diving into the electronics and mechanical systems, and looking at some of the developments in the Volvo Ocean 65 design. Meanwhile, Rick is learning a new skill. Ah, Ian. Hey, Rick. Hey, mate. All right. How are you? And you? Good, 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 good. Haven't seen you for a while. No, no. So what's this? Uh, these are part of the aerial farm masks at the back, but they're actually the life raft holders. Oh, they're like the lids for the life raft. Yeah, the shelves. Hey, do you, do you reckon, um, I could have a go at spraying one of these. Yeah, we get, we get you I, on. I could definitely do the inside. I can't, I can't really mess that up, can I? No, we get, we get you on the gun, no problem at all. Oh, well, this is fun. Never done any spray paint before. OK, in we go. Yeah. Imagine yourself going over the whole thing evenly and nice and steady. All right. So you don't get this sort of random striping. Oh, okay. yeah.
Ta-da! How much? How much? That's got to be a two. I think that's even worse than the one before. <laughs> two. Well, <laughs> we've had a great day here at Green Marine. I've got a four out of ten for rigging, an average of 2.5 for spray painting. I think it's time for me to get back to Alicante. <laughs> Stick to the J-dub, mate. <laughs>